Getting started with Trio. I've got this little Trio MC4N EtherCAT controller connected to a Copley TE2 two axis stepper drive. And I'm going to go through the step by step for getting things uh, powered up and connected. And hopefully, I can enable my motor by the end of this session. Um, we have 24 volts on the connector. And when we turn the power on uh, to the 24 volts, we'll see a system display here with the IP address of the device. So IP 192.168.000.250, and then a sub address 255, 255, 255, 000. So we can't conflict the PC with that, but but we do need to know the IP address of this device. Uh, the EtherCAT master port out is connected to the Copley in, and if there was another drive, it would come out and go further. And this is a two axes drive, so there, there could be two motors. I'm just going to use axes A today. So I turn the power on the drive, and we can see a solid EtherCAT connection and the drive is disabled uh, with the blinking lights and there's um, also a serial cable I've got a USB to RJ11 cable uh, the stow is connected safe torque off to bypass the safety so that I can enable the drive and the drive is waiting for the EtherCAT master to come in and enable the drive so I have CME2 version 7.1 beta 32 connected to a TE20907, which is a two axis drive. It's got an A and a, and a B axis. And you can see on the control panel that the mode is stepper can and it's software disabled. We have to wait for the master to enable the drive. Same thing with axis B. On the um, Basic setup screen, we have to make sure that we're in the right mode. Can open over EtherCAT. And same thing for both axes. Can open over EtherCAT. This will be the source of the command. Um, I could jog the motor to make sure it moves. We can see motion here as the counts change. And uh, when I disable, it's in a disable mode. When I Enable it to can open over stepper. So be sure not to save it in a software program mode if you jog it. And another thing about jogging with the can open master, you should disconnect the can open master because even if it's not running software, there could be messages that are commanding position. So it could jog positive and negative in the same direction, which is not very good. So just disconnect the EtherCAT cable with that. But we need to configure the computer Ethernet connection to be used for the EtherCAT. So on the control panel, we got to find network and sharing center, and then change adapter settings, locate your Ethernet port, find Ethernet internet protocol version for TCP IPv4. Um, you can look at the properties, but you have to use an IP address that is not being used. By something else. So this is the same that the, uh, the guys at Trio said to use. Click on the subnet mask 255.255.0, and this is the address of the computer, not the address of the Trio, and then we say OK. And now we can connect our EtherCAT cable. So here it goes. I connect the Ether. CAT cable from the PC to the TRIO. I see the IP address 250 for the TRIO. And uh, looks like we're ready to go here. So on the TRIOMotion.com webpage, we can download the Motion Perfect software. And anytime you download the free software, you put in a username and password. I already did that. And also, while we're here, let's download the, uh, the firmware. And we got the MC, uh, MC4N 
So the MC4 and EtherCAT firmware is what we'll download. I downloaded these already, unzipped it. There's my Motion Perfect, and here's my firmware inside the zip file. It's on my desktop. I also found an app node 258. Uh, I got some communication notes and some training presentation also, so that, that will help me later for a more advanced video. But we're going to run the uh, Motion Perfect version 4 software, which will um, need to have the address. So it's already looking to see what I have connected, and, and there it is. There's the MC4N EtherCAT. So under the controller, I'll set up the connection settings. Yes, it breaks the, the settings to set it up, but this is the IP address that was flashing on the Trio controller, and I enter that, and I apply and connect, and it does that. And uh, now we're going to take a look at the EtherCAT message. So under, um, I'm going to open up a terminal, zero, and click on it, and enter the uh, EtherCAT initialization message, which, if we're connected, should do something. Okay, there's a little bit of, of a problem here. Uh, I'm going to try resetting the motion controller. The drives are configured properly, and we'll see how this comes up. Uh, we can see on the output screen, there's the EtherCAT auto initialization. There, we're in safe, we're in a NIT, safe op, a pre-operational safe op, and then operational state. That's the state we want to be in after power up or reset, and then now we're, we're connected here. Uh, I should be able to enable my drive, and uh, we can confirm that using CME2. So there we go, the EtherCAT message is initializing the drive and there it is TE2 node addresses aliases other other information we can review that later um, it's in a stepper can I should be in to enable the drive good so the drive is enabled um, there's a servo equals one command um, that should allow me to Make a move uh, forward. There it goes. It's moving forward. Cancel. Move one. Uh, oh yeah. What does that mean? So if we take a look at the uh, axes parameters, we can see we have a node zero and a node one. Um, actually, I'm going to change the units. I have 4,000 counts per rev. Oh, that still came out the same. So speed is one one rev a second. XL and D cell 10 revs per second per second. These are just units. Um, so this is axis zero, base zero. So that's what we're talking to. So move one rev um, at 4330 and. It moved one rev XL, one RPM, stopped, and there we go. And we can disable the drive. And uh, that's it for uh, basic uh, EtherCAT with a TRIO. So we can enable a drive, make a move, and uh, next time we'll learn how to do a MC config. Um, Take a, take a quick look here at the uh, controllers. The MC config file has limited things that you can do. Uh, watchdog, 
Ethercat. That's that Ethercat 00, zero command. So we can turn on a watchdog. We can auto Ethercat on power up, or we can assign uh, addresses. Um, so here's uh, an example of the Ethercat coming up with. We could have several copy drives starting at you know, 0, 1, 2, 3. And then there's the aliases and the assignments. So there's a definition of what this uh, means here in the app note. Enable, disable, watchdog off and on. Writes to the COE, can open over Ethercat. Object 6040, which is the control word. So we can enable axes, disable axes, change modes. We can uh, restart Ethercat in different modes of operation, different slots. And we can, um, here's the MC config. This would be a, a program that runs after uh, power up or reset on the controller. Uh, and again, we can specify modes of operation for the drive. Normally it's a uh, position mode doing uh, cyclic synchronous positions. Uh, with a stepper it's, it's open loop, uh, but with a servo you could do like a torque mode or something, but let's, let's keep it simple. Um, we can read any object in the object dictionary, so that's kind of that's kind of handy. It uses an SDO to read any object. We can write to other objects too. That's very, very powerful. And here's the Ethercat commands uh, for your for your program. And, uh, you can see the configuration of the drive. Cyclic settings, those are important for synchronization. Delayed startup, that's a good idea. Wait till the Ethercat gets booted up before we try to move anywhere. And uh, also, sort of the basic uh, lesson on the Ethercat, you know, enabling an axes. So turn the watchdog on, enable axes, disable the axes. You got the Ethercat command, its function. Um, this is like the initialization command, manually initialize the network, get number of slaves on the bus. So these are the, the commands that we can send. Check network status, that's always good to do. And again, the uh, command to read any variable, read functions from the drive, write, and what's the purpose of the MC configuration file is, and you, you create the file and you can overwrite the auto Ethercat setting. So I'll show some more on that later, but just giving a review of it here. Um, all the commands that we can do with the MC config file. And uh, you get a little hint of that different programs you can run from the controller. MC config. It could be a startup program, things you do to initialize, and then other programs that you can run. Um, so that's it uh, for Ethercat, Trio, and Copley. Thanks for watching.